What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield of VGC 2021 video. Now, today, I'm gonna to be sharing something a little crazy. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a bombshell theory as to why we got this insane news as to what Series 9 rules are. But yeah, uh, before we get into that, do me a favor, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed at any point in time, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content and answer my comment question of the day. What do you think about the Series 9 rules? Anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. Actually, before we start, do me a favor, check out my merch store. I'm selling some celebratory 20,000 subscribers merch. It's just some nice premium hoodies and shirts. They're all they're all just very nice. Uh, if you want to support the channel, it's a good way of doing it and you get some honestly very fashionable merch. No one has to know you're wearing YouTuber stuff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. So, Series 9, like this was insane when, when I read this. The, the VGC Twitter community just absolutely exploded on itself. Like, what is this? So, uh, for some context, Series 8 was a restricted format. We were allowed one restricted Pokemon per team, and the natural progression of things would have indicated that we were probably going to go to a double restricted format in Series 9. But, that is pretty much the exact opposite of what happened. We were allowed one restricted in Series 8, and now we are allowed zero restricteds in Series 9. Now, some people will say like, oh, well, you know, that's just because restrictions are busted. You wouldn't want two per team. Well, actually, in, in previous years, we've been perfectly fine with two per team. In fact, some people have argued that two per team is the way that this game was meant to be played. Uh, there were a lot of people playing GS Cup in previous months saying that it was a really fun format. So why, why are we doing this? Why are we going back to one restricted? No, not even one restricted. Why are we going back to zero restricteds per team? We've never done that in the history of this game. In fact, I have a timeline of formats here, and I'm going to be going over why I think that we're going back to zero restricteds for the remainder of this game's lifetime. I feel like the Series 9 rule set will be the last rule set for the remainder of this game's life, and it's a little bit crazy, but hear me out. So, let's talk about this. So, obviously, no restricteds per team, kind of crazy. The way they word it is... Um, what was it? The ninth restricted series uh, focused on the Pokemon of the Galar decks, Isle of Armor Pokedex included in the Pokemon Crown Tundra DLC, uh, and legendary Pokemon of the game, but not in any Pokedex. And there is an extra ban list that allows for all Gigantamax. So let's let's go through the previous formats, right? Dragapult Series 1, we were allowed every Pokemon in the regional decks, uh, with the exception of a few Gigantamax. Series 2, Tokus, we were allowed every Pokemon with, you know, a couple of more Dynamax. Series 3, is when we got the Pokemon Home Pokemon added to the allowed Pokemon. Uh, this included Venusaur, Blastoise, uh, as well as the Alolan starters, so Incineroar was also allowed. However, there was still a restriction on Gigantamax Pokemon. Series 4 lifted the restriction on those Gigantamax Pokemon. Series 5 is when we got the Isle of Armor DLC, and that actually was a huge shakeup to the metagame. Uh, it allowed us to use things like um, hidden ability starters like Cinderace, like Rillaboom with Grassy Surge. Uh, in fact, Cinderace was insane in the format, that's why I chose it to represent it. Uh, we also got access to things like Kingdra and Politoed. Um, and the closest we've ever come to reverting rules was Series 6. Never again do we revert rules. Series 6 uh, was when we were banning the top 10 most used Pokemon from the singles games and the uh, doubles metagame. So things like Dragapult, Togekiss, uh, Cinderace, Rillaboom, they all got banned. I think Rillaboom got banned. No, Rillaboom did not, I believe. I think it dodged it. Anyways, so th those things all got banned, right? And that's the closest we ever got to reverting rule sets. And in my opinion, the Series 5 rule set was the definitive rule set for that chunk of DLC. And Series 6 was actually probably just their way of stalling out until they could release Series 7 rules, which of course uh, was the Crown Tundra DLC where we got access to legendaries. Now, if you don't know how games usually go, basically with a game's lifetime, what they like to do is for the first year of the game's run, it's only the Pokemon in that region that you're allowed to use in the game, or uh, in competitive. So VGC 2017 is a good example of this. We were only allowed to use Alolan Pokemon. VGC 2018 was in the exact same game However, it allowed the use of the National Dex Pokemon, so we were allowed to use extra Pokemon on top of that. We could use Megas, like uh, Mega Manectric and stuff, so it was, it was really cool, right? And then, the final year of a game's lifetime, the final year on that engine, 
for Sun and Moon, this was by the time Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon came out, we were allowed to use uh, two Restricteds per team. In my opinion, I feel like Series 8 was just another Series 6. I feel like they were sort of stalling until they could get to the next drop of content. You might say, Marcos, where are you going with this? Are you insane? I think you're insane. But but hear me out. There's, there's a little bit more to this. So, basically, we have, as a community, pretty much all agreed that we are certainly getting Diamond and Pearl Remix uh, in the next like cycle of games in November pretty much and they're probably going to get announced in February which is when Pokemon Day is we're getting a huge direct on Pokemon Day and that's probably where they're going to announce it that is also where they announce other major things in for for the games other just major events so the thing about remakes is they're always made in the same engine as that generation's initial game Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were in the exact same engine as X and Y Along with that, that meant that X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were cross compatible. You were able to play, like you were able to battle your friends, you were able to trade with your friends if you had the two different games, even though Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire added content not available in X and Y. However, that was a very small amount of content. It was a few extra megas, and I, I believe that's it, just a couple of like the primals too. Like it was just a few extra forms, right? The same went for Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Sun and Moon. You know, you, you didn't have all the content that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon did. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon got extra Ultra Beasts, and I believe that was pretty much it. I believe they also got Ultra Necrozma. Now, those were cross-compatible. You couldn't trade, you know, the new Ultra Beasts into the old game. However, once again, it was a very small amount of content. If we're getting Diamond and Pearl remakes in, you know, November 2021, and if they want those games to be compatible with games on the same engine, Sword and Shield, just as the you know the, the precedent has been, just as it's always been, I feel like they need to add the final hundred or so Pokemon into the Pokedex, because we're really not missing that much, but a substantial amount of those Pokemon are Pokemon that are found in the Sinnoh regional decks. Things like Rampardos, Infernape, those Pokemon are not in this game. So... If they want to have cross compatibility, I feel like just that substantial amount of Pokemon justifies them doing a final update for Sword and Shield where they actually just, they're not going to do a DLC. It's not going to be DLC. They're going to update it. They're going to allow us probably, in, in my opinion, they're going to allow us to transfer up our Pokemon from Pokemon Home in our older games into Sword and Shield. You won't be able to capture them because like in, in Sun and Moon, you weren't able to capture all the Pokemon available in the National decks, but you were able to transfer them up. I think that with Pokemon Day coming in February, February 27th or whatever day it is, I think they're going to drop a bombshell and say, hey, we've, we're updating Pokemon Sword and Shield. You can now transfer the old Pokemon up. And this would allow the game to be ready for the release of the Diamond and Pearl remix for the Sinnoh remix. So you can actually trade between those games and play with those two games. Sinnoh remix are like uh, enough of a thing where they probably don't expect anyone to not buy them if that makes sense like people have said like oh there's no way they're going to add every single pokemon into the pokedex they've essentially added the majority of them into the pokedex there's only a couple of them missing in the grand scheme of things right now people say like oh it's just a cash grab that's why they're never going to do it they have already squeezed every drop of money they could out of this game free in series five and just like the isle of armor dlc in general People already bought that. They already got extra Pokemon in this game. They, they paid for that. While, yes, you could, they also just updated the game for free so you could transfer in those Pokemon. People wanted to play the DLC. Series 8, if you wanted to use the Reigns of Unity, you had to buy the DLC. You, you, you had to buy the DLC. So people have already bought that DLC. So, like, the next series, I feel like we're going back to Series 7 rules, but they're going to add in the last couple of Pokemon. It's not that many. But it's enough Pokemon where they would need to update the game for it to be cross-compatible with the Diamond and Pearl remakes made on the same engine. Kind of an insane theory, I know, but like I said, I feel like they've already squeezed every bit of money they could out of these people. So <laughs> there's really no reason not to just update it to be cross-compatible. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. It'd be the first time that you couldn't trade between the remakes made in the same engine of a game and another game and like the original game, you know? It just doesn't make sense. So yeah, that's that's my theory. 
Let me know what you guys think about the theory in the comment section down below. Personally, I'd be really excited if I could like bring up Honchkrow, if Honchkrow could be brought up. And if, if you believe my theory might be true, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what Pokemon you'd be excited to bring in. I'm not going to put any like, oh, Sinnoh, you know, Sinnoh update confirmed. I'm not going to like do that in the thumbnail. I'm going to, it's going to be a little bit of a bombshell for the video. So yeah, let me know. I know this is a bit of a shorter video, a bit more of a conspiracy-ish video, but it's something I wanted to get out there. It's, it's just a thought that's been knocking on the back of my head, you know? But yeah, if you guys enjoyed it at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.